In this video, we're going to address the remaining issues, which all relate to Android development. The first step is to download Android Studio, which is the official IDE for the Google Android operating system. To do that, we'll go to their homepage, then click Download Android Studio for Mac. Once again, this is a fairly large download, so it'll take a few minutes to complete. Okay, our download has now finished. Let's go ahead and open up the file. Again, we'll drag and drop the application into the Applications folder and let it copy over. With Android Studio now installed, we can go to our Applications and double click on Android Studio to load up the program. For our installation, we're not going to import any settings, although if you did have some, feel free to do that. Android has a few extra components that it needs to install, so it starts out by installing those. For the first time setup, it will walk you through a setup wizard. We'll choose the standard installation, default theme, and click finish. Again, we have some more tools to download for Android. Okay, so it's downloaded the components. I have a warning that it can't run in nested virtual machines because of the setup I'm using to record this. Um, you should not see this warning unless you're trying to run this in a virtual machine. And if you are trying to run this in a virtual machine, it's probably not gonna work for you. So for the rest of the videos, I'll be using my standard laptop, which won't have this issue. But for the purposes of this video, I did wanna do a completely fresh install. So this is why I'm getting this message. I'll click finish and we have another welcome screen. And there are a few options you can go with. I'm just gonna create a new Android Studio project because there are a few settings I want to get to that are available from within the project view. I'll leave everything blank and state that I do want the Android 15 API and click add no activity. I'm not sure if there's another way to do the things I want to get done without having to create a new project, but I know this works for me and it's pretty simple, so I just go with it. Okay, our project has loaded up. We can close the tip of the day. And the reason why we wanted this layout was for the Android virtual device tools, which has found this little purple icon with a little Android sticking his head out. And what we're gonna do is create a virtual device. We'll stick with the Nexus 5 phone, but you can choose whichever device you'd prefer. In this step, we'll select a system image. Here I will download the first result available, which requires accepting a license agreement. It'll take a few minutes to download this, so we'll let that run. Now that we have our system image installed, we can click Next. And if you wanna name it, you can name it. I'll leave it as the default. And now I have an emulator to use for my testing. Appium Doctor mentioned that a few variables were not set, Android Home, Java Home, and the bin directory for Java Home. These variables are known as environment variables, and they're system-wide variables defined for use by various applications. And there are a few ways you can configure these. We're going to use the bash profile file in order to set it up. You can see if you have this file by typing ls tilde slash dot bash profile. If it reports that you have no such file or directory, you can go ahead and create it by running the same command, except you replace ls with touch. Now, if I run that ls command again, it will return a result. To edit this file, we're gonna run open-e and pass in the name, and it will open in a text editor. If you're more comfortable using Vim or your preferred text editor, you can certainly open it up in that. First, we want to set up Android Home. We're going to use the export command to define our environment variable. We'll set its name to be Android Home and store it in quotes. To find the value for this, we'll go into our Android Studio project, then in file and default project structure, it will define for us our Android SDK location. We can copy that location over and paste it in, and now we've set our Android Home. We'll do the same thing for Java Home this time copying the JDK location. One last thing we'll need to do is update our path variable to include the bin folder inside of Java Home. We're going to set path to include Java Home slash bin. This will use the directory provided in our Java Home variable 
And then importantly, we need to make sure we add existing path to our new path. Please don't forget that part. It's very important. And if you do forget it, you can mess up your computer settings pretty badly. Now we can save our file and come back over to the terminal and run our file by using source bash profile. There will be no output from this, but it will actually run through those three lines that we wrote and execute them. We can test this by using the echo command, passing in the variable name that we want to test. Or we can run Appium Doctor and see that everything looks good and that no more fixes are needed. This finishes up the installation for Android. And in the next video, we'll start testing with Appium using our local installation.